today we're going to do part two of the full statistical meta breakdown of 2024 VCT. If you didn't go and watch part one, go and watch part one because I can't explain what's going on here. Because uh, today we're just going to dive straight into it. We've got four maps to go through and then the overall data at the end. So let's just dive in. We're going to start with Icebox and here we go. Uh, so surprisingly, and this surprised me, maybe it'll surprise you, the most played comp this year was actually still the uh, double controller harbor comp, uh, which kind of died off towards the end of the season. Really, it was only Leviathan who were playing it by the end of the season, but it was the most popular comp in part thanks to the fact that this next comp that I've got here, which is kind of the Gen G comp with the Gecko KO, there were other variants of this comp, you know, like you've got Sova Gecko, Sova KO, you know, those kind of things. Like there was a lot of mix and matching with the these three initiators, uh, you know, that all had decently high play rates. Um, and as you can see, the Gecko KO version in particular was the best of those uh, of those variants in terms of the win rate. Obviously, Gen G helping that, but a lot of other teams did find success with this comp on Icebox as well. And then here at the bottom, I've got your kind of old Sage comp. And you can actually see that, you know, three kind of popular ways of playing the map actually did pretty well. So in terms of, you know, the comps that are perhaps most standard, they were doing pretty well. In terms of different archetypes on Icebox, you actually, again, had quite a variance. Most, as I said, were this kind of double initiator, a lot of Gecko Sova, Gecko KO, Sova KO, that kind of stuff uh, there. Then you had this kind of no duelist thing. G2 were a notable team that stuck with no duelist kind of throughout the entire season. Then you got the double controllers and you got the Sage stuff as well. So a fairly balanced and varied meta, actually, in terms of, you know, some of the different approaches to Icebox. And in terms of the agent pick rates and win rates as well, you can see that uh, we had quite the, the variance here. You know, Gecko, KO, Sova, you see their pick rate's all pretty high. Obviously, Killjoy and Viper, very, very high. And Jet, obviously, very high as well. Nothing too surprising there. Um, and you've got a lot of win rates that, you know, are very close to 50%, right? Maybe one game or two games under 50%. Nothing really to go too crazy about. Other than Sova did struggle, and perhaps that is a surprise. But as I said, the Gecko, KO comp, you know, seemed to do the best of the kind of, you know, different ways you could organize the initiators. So, you know, that's probably where this number's coming from. Okay, now on to Lotus, and whilst on Icebox everything was kind of maybe a bit middling, most things are okay, on Lotus that isn't the case, because you've got the meta team comp here, uh, the, this actually had the most comps, 408 comps, so 204 games, and uh, the meta comp coming in at 47%, way more than anything else, and had an incredibly high win rate as well. Uh, and that's going to be a theme with the agents on this map also because uh, this second comp here was a, a kind of popular towards the end of the season with the breach cipher and it didn't work. Um, and then at the bottom here, I've just got the EDG comp where they didn't lose a game uh, with their comp uh, towards the end of champs, of course. Moving on to the archetypes and it mostly was obviously the meta, you know, the meta is pretty cemented here on this map. Uh, the second idea was the double initiator stuff, about 20%. Um, and then you got some double duelist stuff and there were quite a few, you know, weirder comps out there. You know, Foot were a team that were playing like Sage Jet stuff, you know, there was, there was quite a few bizarre comps on this map. And when we come to the agent win rates, of course, it's no surprise that if you were part of the meta comp, you were going to do pretty well, basically. And uh, you can see that in these win rates, right? Like Cypher got destroyed by Killjoy. Breach got destroyed by Viper. Like, that's just kind of the way it went. Interestingly, the Neon Rays was actually fairly balanced, right? We weren't too far off for either Neon or Rays uh, off each other. But some of these other things, basically, all I can say to you is unless you're EDG, just play the meta comp. Okay, moving on to split. And obviously, it's been a while since you uh, might have thought of split. But it is coming back, you know, relatively soon. So it'll be back in the fray. Uh, and here, what it was for split, right? You'll remember this as the Sentinels comp. Or that's what I'm going to call it. And it was the most picked comp at 35% there. This kind of did become the main meta comp that most teams were playing. Some other ideas with this one, which was quite interesting, kind of picked up towards the end of the season as well. Uh, you know, where you had the Breach kind of Viper fade in there as well. Probably team is just feeling like sky isn't very good so let's just not play sky and play something else um and then you've got this bomb comp here this was the fanatic comp the kind of more aggressive you know breach raised yoru kind of stuff getting in your face and in terms of the archetypes again it mostly was the kind of sen-esque stuff with the solo sky and uh, playing viper and cypher together you did have quite a bit of double duelist which is probably a carryover from last season's meta uh, and also some of the, like the fanatic double duelist stuff we saw as well and you did have a bit as i mentioned that other comp with the kind of no cypher double initiator viper as well moving on to the agents though and this is what we've got now Again, I've been doing these stats for the past, uh, you know, two seasons before this one as well. And in every season that I've done this, even when Astra was good, Omen was still better than Astra on this map. And so the, now that Astra isn't that good and Omen is 
still better than Astra. Uh, Omen is still the correct choice on this map, and uh, basically always has been, it seems, at least statistically. Uh, this, you will be shocked, is the only map where Breach had a positive win rate. Bit of a spoiler for later on, but he actually had a positive non-mirror win rate on Split, so if you're gonna play Breach anywhere, Apparently, it should be split. Cypher, of course, did well. No real great surprise. Uh, Viper always does pretty well on split and just pretty well in general also. But Fade was a big winner. Interesting that Sky wasn't, right? Because Sky has a very high pick right here and was part of the Sen, like, most meta comp. That did pretty well as a comp. But anytime you played Sky not in that comp, things didn't go that well. And then finally, we have Sunset for our last map here. And Sunset, this is out of quite a few maps. There's again, 364. So quite a lot of comps here were played. Quite a lot of games of Sunset. But no kind of one comp necessarily dominated. There was a lot of mix and matching between the initiators, right? So for instance, you'll recognize this top comp here as the kind of Team Heretics. And then EDG picked up towards the end of the season uh, and did very well with it, obviously, as you can see in both of those teams definitely contributed to this high uh, non-mirror win rate here um and then there was a lot of these kind of stuff as well right so you got raise gecko breach but then there was a raise ko gecko there was raise sova breach you know there was all sorts of mixing and matching of these four initiators basically and sometimes fade as well you know with a neon or a raise so that's why no kind of one comp dominated it was often omen cypher and then one of neon or raise and then some pairing of initiators and then at the bottom here uh, i've got the paper rex comp where they you know forewent the cypher and uh, brought in a sage instead and you can see that the meta very much reflects that when we look at the archetypes because you see that the double initiator kind of cypher stuff was about two-thirds of the meta overall and it's just basically which initiators are you picking in terms of other things that we had we did have you know some sage stuff uh, i've put the kind of split meta here this is where you're playing viper cypher together you know often with a sky as well which towards the start of the season this was a very prominent idea but very much fell off uh, towards the end of the season and again, when we look at some of the win rates here for the agents, in terms of the initiators and what initiators you should play, well, according to the win rates, uh, it was Gecko and KO. Those were the, the superior option uh, as Breach, again, didn't do so well here on Sunset. And Sova was okay, an okay option, but uh, again, not quite as good as Gecko or KO did here. You can see Fade was definitely not the right option. In terms of the Duelist, Neon was, uh, you know, doing pretty well. Ray still did fine. Uh, but Neon, obviously, with Team Heretics, with uh, EDG, had quite a few wins overall. To me, what's quite interesting is that Viper did actually pretty well because we didn't see much Viper at all towards the end of the season. But actually, the teams that played Viper earlier on in the season were winning quite a lot. And that kind of uh, continued uh, throughout. But a lot of teams kind of dropped it. And obviously, you got Sage here as well, of course, uh, you know, with a very high win rate. And again, you might look at Cyphers and be like, whoa, is Cypher not good on this map? No, it was basically just that Paper Rex won a lot of games on Sunset, particularly in Pacific, and so that carried kind of Sage's win rate, and it kind of tanked Cypher's win rate. Okay, so now we're going to do the overall pick rates, and then the overall win rates as well for all of the agents. This is out of 2,204 team comps overall across all the maps, and... Some of this won't be that much of a surprise to you, like Omen being at the top here with Viper. Now, Omen actually did overtake Viper from the first time that I did this, uh, so we are seeing a bit less of Viper overall, but still quite a lot of Omen. Of course, when we're looking at pick rates, you have to consider, you know, what maps are getting played, like Lotus got played a lot, so if you're meta on Lotus, that's going to boost up your pick rate because it was a very popular map that a lot of teams uh, picked into. So uh, you've got Raze here, you know, you've got Sova, Cypher, Jet, probably what you would mostly expect here towards uh, the top. I was interested that ISO is still actually at the bottom, only 28 games overall, you know, pretty close to some of the others, but unfortunately still at the bottom. And I will say that this did kind of truncate a bit from the second half of the season, like all of the agents kind of got a bit closer in terms of you know the pick rates which is good in the whole i think it is looking like a, a decent meta maybe there's still a couple things to sort out towards the top and maybe still a couple things towards the bottom here to sort out uh but on the whole this is a this is better than most that i've done and then finally here we have the non-mirror win rates now some of the agents are going to be grayed out if an agent is grayed out for their win rate that means they didn't have at least 50 games that's the kind of cutoff point that i put for the entirety of the season so let's take a look at the list here it is 
And Clove is at the top of the list. And some of you are going to go, ha, DMV hates Clove. He thinks Clove is bad, but Clove's at the top of the list. So clearly he's wrong. Ha, ha, ha. Now, the thing is, Clove doesn't have 50 games. So Clove is uh, grayed out, as you can see. And I will say that a lot of this is just EDG and FPX. Uh, EDG, obviously, on Lotus. And you might remember FPX earlier on on Icebox in the season. But next up is an agent that I do think is very good, which is Viper. And obviously, Viper, as I said, had kind of seen a bit of a decrease in play rate overall. But... Viper continues to win. Then you've got Sage, and I'd say that Sage and Brim are good examples of this, right? Of agents that end up with pretty good non-mirror win rates a lot of the time, uh, because they only get played on maps that they're good, right? We saw on Sunset, obviously, Paper X using Sage very well, and that is contributing to this high win rate. And then you know, Sage is just pretty good on Icebox, right? And that's where you're going to get see Sage played, and Sage isn't going to get played anywhere else, basically, right? Same for Brim. Brim's going to get played on, on Bind, and Brim is good on Bind. And then other than that, Brim's not really going to get played, right? So they end up with kind of boosted non-mirror win rates because no one ever tries them on maps that they're not good at. Uh, and then you've got a ton of initiators here. We do have some pretty big sample sizes for some of these agents, right? Like Gecko, 323 games. Cypher, 335 non-mirror games. You know, quite big uh, in this middle pack. You know, you got a lot of initiators. Don't read too much into that. I have to talk about Breach because I've been doing these stats for three seasons now. And of qualifying agents, so agents that have enough non-mirror games to kind of consider it a decent sample size, like, yeah, Breach has been last in every single one of those seasons, right? Which, it just means, Breach to me must be the most overrated agent, because uh, this is out of 254 games, right? This is not a small sample size. And then you add it to the last two seasons that I've been doing this as well, you're looking at a pretty substantial sample size of Breach consistently being the worst performer in the game, non-mirror win rate wise. As I said, Split is the only map the Breach had a positive win rate on whatsoever. And on a lot of the other maps, it wasn't even close to 50%, as you can see with the overall 43% here. So yeah, Breach might not be as good as you think.